Hey guys, had a quick question from Douglas. First off, Douglas, thanks for watching. Thanks for the comments. Thank you very much for the questions, and I hope I can help you out here. Um, when mounting a bar and chain, especially when you're new to this, can be a, a little challenging. There's some things that you need to look for. So I'll just kind of try to go through a detailed step-by-step. -step. Whenever messing with the chain, wear gloves, uh, any kind of glove, because the teeth are sharp. You can and will get scratched up. This pin here is what moves the bar back and forth, adjusted by this screw. This is your drive gear. There's both rim and spur. This particular model is equipped with a rim sprocket. Your teeth need to fall in between those grooves. And they'll just kind of fit in there. So when putting the chain on, it can be a, t a little bit of a challenge. One, if you look at the bar studs real close, there's a little bit of a ridge, or it goes up the from the threading. It sizes a little larger. That's where your bar is going to rest. Okay, so when installing the chain, there's a couple different ways. One is placing the chain over the nose before you start holding it back here like such. I had to take my gloves off just to be able to run the camera and everything. And slide it over the sprocket or spur gear. Now if you have an outboard clutch, this changes a lot and is nowhere near as easy. Um, or putting on the sprocket first, stretching, running it out and over. So back to this. This is your adjustment pin. Once you get to this stage, the bar is resting back here you want to make sure that it's lined into the grooves, both at the back, across the top, and the front. Down here, that's your adjustment. Now, a lot of people just tighten this up, just like so, and you'll see the bar moving as soon as it starts getting some tension. And you see that chain raising. Okay, so we'll go ahead and raise that, make sure it's in the groove, and by what is easily to get confused is when that gets to the bottom there, boom, most people think it's tight. Now I'm just going to come raise the nose of the bar. By raising the nose of the bar, you notice it's very loose. Now, when you adjust this, you need to tighten it up all the way. You need to raise this when you tighten it. Now when I get to this stage, this is when I put my side covering on. Now while putting this on, you just want them finger tight, but also raise that up, that nose up a little bit as you tighten these. That'll help you get them in spot better. So now when you go to tighten this up, I can't do it one handed, so you'll just have to trust me. You raise that nose and you bring the bottom of that tooth. So this part here to where it just touches, just like it is there. So it'll just slowly come up and touch. That should give you a little bit of snap. See, with that nose down there would make you think that this may be tight. Picking that nose up, it isn't. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this properly here. <clears throat> now once you get that up, you want to give this a spin both directions. You'll need to make sure your chain brake is off and you just kind of spin it. You want it to spin freely and easily and not knock everything off. But that also will start showing, now I'll lift this up, whether there's any extra slack. Once you determine by spinning it that there's no more slack in it, that it's going to stay up about where you have it there, tighten up your bar nuts. Um, I always tighten up the back one first and just because that's the way I was taught. I don't know if there's any particular reasoning for it to do it that way, but that's just how I do it. I tighten the back one first and then the front one. And then I'll spin it again and make sure. The whole time when you're tightening this though, you need to be holding up on your nose of your bar. So you just hold up on that, tighten your back one, tighten your front one. And you don't want to over torque them, but you want to have some good, you know, torque on them. You, you, I know there's a spec somewhere. Every saw is a little different. Don't go twisting it off. You don't need to do that. But you do need to put you know, a reasonable oomph on it.